Alrighty now, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's just watch Piss Hockey. Piss Hockey. With our live White House briefing here on uh, Monday, January 24th. And I'm getting this from the Independent YouTube channel. I'll just put in a little commentary here and there. Deadline. Can I just ask you one other thing about um, infrastructure? You may have seen our story and reporting elsewhere about Republican yeah, lawmakers who tongue. opposed the bipartisan infrastructure law uh, out in the states over the recess, touting the benefits, taking credit in some cases for doing that. And I know that this is a big pillar of the, the Democrats. Uh, Twenty. Man, she's a beauty, and, uh, isn't she? And the president <laughs> for a successful first Yeah. Year. He's touted the bipartisan nature of this. Is he going to look at that resting Pisaki face? Is he going to call them out for, for for saying that you know they should get credit for something? Could that they shuffle through those papers for the answer, Jen. Well, I would say we we welcome uh, the. Uh, the, a number of Republicans who voted against the infrastructure bill coming around to recognize the impact on their communities. Uh, we've seen mm -hmm. this playbook before, so perhaps it shouldn't come as a surprise. Um, and I don't think I can stand up here and rule out what the president is or isn't going to call out moving forward. Go ahead. Hey, Jen. Uh, the president spoke last week about Russia's Ooh, that was a bitchy face. You see that? loss of empire and encirclement. Mm -hmm. So my question is, if we're sending some thousands of U.S. troops to the Baltics or the eastern flank. Is Look at that face. It's a face only a mother could love. And I question that as well. Is there a chance that that will in Oops. increase the risk of war rather than reducing it? What's this crap? Well, Get the heck had, off here. Uh, troops in the eastern flank countries for decades. It sounds like what's being discussed is sending more right now at a time of real tension. And we have a sacred obligation to support the security of our eastern flank countries. I think it's important to remember who the aggressor is here. It is not the United States. It is not these eastern flank countries. Uh, it is Russia, who has tens of thousands of troops on the border of it Ukraine. It would be 100,000 to be exact, not tens we of thousands. We certainly welcome that. And I, I know both you and the President spoke about little green men, uh, yeah. infiltrators into the country. Now that the British have put out intelligence of a possible coup, uh, planned by Moscow in Ukraine. How would the U.S. respond if that happened? Would that trigger the same sanctions that we're talking about here? Well, I'm, I'm not going to get into intelligence matters, of course. Uh, we've been warning uh, about Russian tactics like this for weeks. Uh, reports of this kind of plotting are deeply concerning. If acted upon, would constitute a severe escalation, and certainly there would be consequences. And then one what more consequences? I know the president's going to hit the road. Is the reason there's nothing on the public schedule, these tensions involving Ukraine, or another reason? We, I expect we will have some travel very, very soon. We're just looking to finalize the details. Go ahead, Kimberly. Thanks. A um, couple of questions. First, a quick oh, Get your question. tongue back in your mouth. It grosses us out. Will be coming to the White House at the end of the month, and if the discussions will center around energy supply to Europe? I know there's been discussion of that. I don't have final confirmation of it. I will work to see if we can get that to you. Yeah, please. circle back. Perfect. And then... Um, as the administration weighs reinstating the terrorist designation on the Houthis, is the president concerned this could block humanitarian aid? And why would the president consider this? Could shuffle in the papers or miss them. Losing assistance given his policy of upholding human rights. Well, uh, let me first say that we call on all parties to, uh, in, to the conflict to de-escalate, abide by their obligations under international humanitarian law to ensure the protection of all civilians and participate fully in an inclusive UN-led peace process. All parties must commit to a peaceful diplomatic solution to ending the conflict and advance a durable resolution that improves the lives of Yemenis and allows them to collectively determine their own future. There have been dangerous escalations in, in days, which is of course why you were asking. These escalations only exacerbate a dire humanitarian crisis and the suffering uh, of the Yemeni people. Uh, we are deeply concerned by these reports, and we are continuing to engage at a diplomatic level. And, uh, and our special envoy, Lender King, uh, reaffirmed our unwavering commitment. He has been recently on the ground uh, pressing parties for de-escalation and protection for civilian lives. And um, quickly, a UK court is now allowing Julian Assange to appeal his extradition to the United States. The Justice Department, as you know, isn't commenting. Um, but what about the president? He says press freedom is critical for democracy, so why is he continuing to pursue this case? Is the reason that he's pursuing this Trump era case because Julian Assange embarrassed the Democratic Party in 2016? 
Again, this is uh, under the purview of the, Demo the Department of Justice, uh, so I don't have any comment from here. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, on the Palin New York Times case, I know you can't maybe speak specifically to the case, but does the White House have any concerns about threats to, to press freedoms, press access to the limits of the First Amendment protection? Uh, I obviously can't speak to the case, so I appreciate you saying that at the top. I, I will say that I think uh, the president has uh, shown uh, that he uh, uh, respects uh, the value of the freedom of the press. Uh, he obviously took uh, a step earlier this year to ensure there couldn't be a replication of actions that had been taken over prior administrations as it related to uh, journalists. Um, so I think that speaks to his commitment, uh, but I don't have any more comment on the case. And then uh, following off of it, I know you guys have forecasted potentially policing reform, executive yeah. action. Some uh, civil rights advocates also want to see Goes the again. human rights executive actions. Is there anything, any details or any timeline for what you think the president, the White House may do there, considering that it's still uh, in Congress? Well, uh, you know, the president is going to keep fighting till his last breath, as, you, as you've heard him say, on voting rights, because he thinks it's so vitally important. Fighting till his last breath for voting rights. No one's being stopped from voting, so I don't know why you're fighting for voting rights. Didn't like about a record number of people vote in the last election, so who's all these people that aren't voting? Um, we did do an executive order uh, early on in the administration, which was quite extensive and comprehensive that is still being implemented. Uh, in terms of additional executive orders that would be possible that we have the authority to do, I don't have anything to predict on the, along those lines, but we are going to continue to fight to get federal legislation passed. We are going to continue to work with states uh, to ensure that uh, there is proper protections uh, and uh, there is, of course, uh, more work ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, there are currently Tom. 150 uh, American military advisors in Ukraine, including members of the Florida National Guard. Uh, are those soldiers going to remain in Ukraine? Are there contingency plans uh, if hostilities break out to remove them? What's their disposition? I, I would point you to the Department of Defense to ask them that question. Okay. Uh, my colleague uh, mentioned Afghanistan, and one of the things that you hear uh, among Russian propaganda is... Here she goes. Let's flip our notebooks, our notebook here to the right page on this BS answer we're about to give. Ukraine is that the United States uh, is an unreliable ally that is using Ukraine uh, as, as a pawn. And they point to the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan as evidence that the United States cannot be counted on. How does the United States respond to that and has the Afghanistan withdrawal complicated diplomacy in this regard? Uh, it is not in our experience. Uh, we, the president ended a 20-year war uh, in Afghanistan, something he had talked about consistently doing for some time as he was running for president and even before then. I think our commitment to... Oh yeah, and he did a great job in the NAT war, but we won't get into that. ...to our NATO partners is clear. Uh, our commitment to Ukrainians is clear. We've sent more security assistance over the last year than in any year in recent history. We've been in constant contact, as is evidenced by the president's call this afternoon, with our European partners as we work uh, to ensure we're in lockstep as we approach the next stage and anticipate what President Putin may or may not do. Uh, so what I would say to that is that sounds like uh, the old Russian propaganda playbook, uh, something we've talked about in the past, and uh, I'd encourage anyone to be mindful of that. And then finally, there's negotiations going on in Congress uh, for Russian sanctions if they do take military action against Ukraine. Does the United States support Congress acting, and are they involved in these negotiations? We are keeping, we are regularly updating uh, and briefing uh, leaders in Congress um, and uh, about uh, what steps are under consideration, what the status is of things we're seeing on the ground. Obviously, we've talked about a lot of this publicly as well. Uh, and we've also been clear that we have a, uh, a severe uh, sanctions package of economic options that uh, is under consideration should they decide to invade. We also recently sanctioned... Okay, so what are some of these ancient sanctions? Name them off. Instead of saying we got all these severe sanctions we're thinking about, name them. What just happened? Uh, ...a couple of individuals for their engagement as well. Uh, but I don't have anything uh, in terms of these specific steps under consideration. We have our own... Of course you don't have any specifics. Because there are none. Severe steps that we are considering here, and we're yeah. keeping Congress abreast of that. Does it help to have Congress involved? What are you keeping Congress abreast of when you just said you don't have any specifics? 
well, we're, we're, we're working in lockstep with them. We are briefing them. We are uh, conveying to them what we're thinking about and considering, um, and, of course, getting feedback from them as well. Well, tell us what that is. That's why we're asking. Uh, go ahead. I, I, I recognize that the White House has... Whoops, there's the tongue. ...said that they have, you know, very severe sanctions that are prepared if Russia invades. Is there any thought to... Look at that face. Oh, God, that face is... Oh, I would slip my wrist if I had to wake up to that face every morning. I'm just saying. ...to enacting sanctions before Russia invades as a form of deterrence, or is, is that under consideration? Well, we did announce a couple of sanctions, sets of sanctions from the Treasury Department last week uh, in response to their, uh, the involvement of a few individuals. We've also plussed up uh, our security assistance Plucked packages up. that we've been delivering to the Ukrainians, including recent deliveries over the last couple of days. And obviously, as we were talking about earlier in this briefing, there's been discussions about how we can uh, support the security of eastern flank countries. But also, we are mindful of what we think is the most effective deterrent and the severe economic sanctions package, something that would be uh, go far beyond what was done and what was on the table in 20. List to some of those severe sanctions. Don't just talk. Oh, we're we're, we're talking about the severe sanctions. What are they? You can't just say we're doing this, but then not tell us what this is. 2014, including uh, the consideration of imposing unprecedented export control uh, measures that would hit hard at President Putin's ambitions, are part of the discussion and are... Like what? What export controls what? List it assessment is that is most effective as a, as a, a deterrent tool and not as one we would do in advance. Oh yeah, it's such a great deterrent that it's not stopping anything. Okay, so you're saying the threat of the sanctions is the most effective deterrent? Correct. Tool. Well, if that's the most effective deterrent, it's not working. I have a, a question just to follow up. I, I know that, you know... Oh, tongue. There goes the tongue again. You were asked about Americans who are now in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And I know you said that th there is no precedent, you know, outside of Afghanistan for evacuations and if there was like some type of military encouragement by the Russians. So I, I just want to be clear if- a Quit flipping through the pages for the answer. Just listen. Americans are still in Ukraine and things start happening with Russia. About time we had another I, tongue flash. Well, we are conveying very clearly now that now is the time to leave and that there are means to do that. Of course, there's commercial airlines. You can depart over land. There's obviously the embassy there to provide assistance. And this is very similar to what we did in Ethiopia, Kazakhstan, and many other countries over the course of the last several decades. Uh, but there is not an intention or a plan for any military evacuation. And just quickly, um, in the... in the past um a, a call another call with putin was still on the table mm -hmm. i believe that the president was supposed to talk with his advisors about that uh this weekend like what have any decisions been made about that will there be uh, another call or another talk with putin the president uh remains open to leader to leader diplomacy of course he knows how effective that can be uh but i don't have anything to predict or preview at this point in time in terms of a call between them that's all right just circle back uh, well, hold on, let me just get to the last two and then I'll come back around. Go ahead. The president said last week that he has Tongue. basically on a daily basis to work to keep unity in NATO. Um, how the unified are NATO partners if it comes to hard and meaningful sanctions against Russia? And what is the president's assessment or the White House's assessment of Which the he's smiling about. chancellor in that case? Well, uh, I know that my uh, that our Secretary of State spoke to this um, just yesterday, and what I would note is that, um, as he said, uh, that we are confident the Germans share our concerns and are prepared to respond swiftly, effectively, and in a united way to Russian aggression against Ukraine. Germany is one of our closest allies. In fact, uh, we look forward, of course, to welcoming the Chancellor here uh, to the United States in February. Um, the Germans have said, as you know, that if Russia further invades Ukraine, the, the, future Nord Stream 2, the future of Nord Stream 2 would be in grave jeopardy. This is real leverage over Putin. If Putin wants to see gas flow through the pipeline, he cannot invade Ukraine. The pipeline is, of course, not operational, but that is often the context of how this question is asked. I think what the president was conveying is that uh, it doesn't happen on its own. It requires work. It requires conversations. It requires face-to-face -face diplomacy. I think there's been over 100 engagements that 
senior members of his national security team and the president have taken a part of part in in order to ensure that we are united and strong as we uh, as we uh, confront the the threats posed by President Putin. Germany need more work than other NATO partners. And I would say Germany remains one of our key partners and allies, uh, and again, we are working in lockstep with them. Go ahead. Yes, hi, Jen. Uh, Senator Susan Collins is leading a working group looking at reforming the Electoral Count Act mm -hmm. so that during the counting of the Electoral College, a vice president could not reject one slate of electors and say, recognize a rival slate supporting a rival candidate. I'm just wondering whether the White House has talked to either Senator Collins or any other senators about this, and given shall we say, recent history, whether the president supports reforming the Electoral Cabinet? Well, we've never said we were opposed to it. Uh, we are in touch with a range of senators. I'm not going to detail who, uh, but across the board from se through senior members of uh, the legislative team, senior advisors for the president, uh, about a range of steps that can be taken. What's important to note, and I've said in the past, but I'll just reiterate it, that it does not take the place of, is not a replacement for the John Lewis Voting Rights Act or any of the voting rights federal legislation we were working to get across the finish line, because they do entirely different things, including creating a baseline for what the American people should, should expect and frankly demand in terms of what kind of access they should have to participate in the voting process. And of course, the, uh, the requirement that any state that has a history of voter suppression would have to get approval from the Department of Justice. In order what states have a history of voter suppression? Can she, can she freaking be a little more specific on that bullshit? In order to change voting laws. The Electoral Count Act doesn't do that, uh, but we are open to the conversations. We've been participating in the conversations, but it's, it's, it's not a replacement for. On a different subject, uh, so much of the public discourse about so-called Havana Syndrome has come from anonymous leaks, and I'm just wondering how soon will the National Security Council release their expert report on Havana Syndrome and uh, these anomalous health incidents, and will this report be made, you know, public in a in a fulsome way? Sure. Well, I know there's been a recent CIA uh, report um, that talks about the findings of their interim analysis. It does not, which does not rule out that a foreign actor may be involved in a subset of reported cases, and affirms that the intelligence community will be drilling down in its analysis on a subset of cases. Um, the toughest unresolved ones, of course, to try to determine whether a foreign actor may be involved. There are a range of investigations uh, and efforts underway across the U.S. government, and we continue to take every report of a suspected incident uh, safely. What's most important is the president has asked, has asked his national security team to ensure we are leaving no stone. Did she just say axed? unturned and ensuring that people who have been impacted receive the proper health care they need. Uh, I can't make a prediction of what a final release of a report would look like. Uh, I would really point you to the intelligence community on that. Okay, just one last one. Uh, just yesterday in D.C., not far from here actually, there Tom. was an anti-mask, uh, uh, yeah. anti-lockdown rally where you know, some of the rhetoric around that was talking about Nuremberg-style trials to, to you know, hold Anthony Fauci to account, to go after the media for spreading lies, things like this. I'm just wondering how the, how the administration is going to respond to what appears to be a growing intensity and potential for violence in the anti-vax movement. Well, we, we are well aware that there is a loud and vocal minority uh, empowered through social media and media platforms that proliferate disinformation. Politi well, give me this disinformation shit. People don't want to wear the masks all the time. That's not disinformation. Politicians who espouse conspiracy theories and fundraise off of opposition to public health. We know that. We also know that 87% of American adults have at least one shot. That's the vast, vast majority. Uh, and over 210 million Americans are fully... It's not 87%. That's a bunch of bullshit. ...vaccinated. So our view is that it's wrong, it's dangerous, and it stands in the way of a coordinated effort to save more American lives. Vaccinated people are getting the freaking Omicron, so vaccination does jack squat. Can we be clear on that? Only 25%, I don't know the number of is closer to 25% have their booster, right? Do you, do you feel like you guys are sort of losing the war when it comes to the messaging on the importance of these type of public health measures like getting vaccinated? Again, I, uh, our view is that it's a loud and vocal minority, but still... Prove it's a minority. Prove it. Dangerous. Uh, still problematic. The fact that 87% of American adults 
all of those people, of course, mathematically did not vote for Joe Biden, um, have ha had at least one shot means we've far surpassed where I think most people think we would be. You surpassed what? You got 87, you're saying you have 87% of the people vaccinated. It's obviously not stopping people from getting COVID. So, you know, what exactly are you achieving here? It's difficult and challenging, of course, to get more people vaccinated. We know that. Um, yeah, that's why you want to have mandates. And of course, efforts that are dangerous and wrong by groups like this uh, are oh, dangerous and wrong. How is it dangerous and wrong? If the vaccine isn't working and people don't want to get vaccinated because they see it's not working, how's that dangerous? Problematic, uh, as is the spread. Oh, it's of problematic because you're not getting your freaking way. Oh, look at that face. Ooh, it's a frightening face there. Look at oh god. Misinformation on social media platforms, unfortunately, out of the mouths of. You want to stop COVID? Wear a mask with her face on it. If I was COVID, I wouldn't get anywhere near that mask. Some uh, prominent officials. All of that is problematic and harmful. But again, I think we should be mindful of the large percentage of people that have had one shot. 75% have had two shots. Obviously, our effort has been to get more people boosted. But if you're starting the process, that's a good sign. Just, yeah. Uh, two follow-ups. Thank you for working the room. For coming back. Just two more details sure. on, on Ukraine. Was there something specific that prompted today's meeting with those European leaders? It was, uh, it's a part of our ongoing contingency planning and discussions about uh, what we are seeing, uh, but also how we can help protect and support their security as it well. It wasn't like the intelligence report from the British over the weekend or something that prompted everybody to get together? No, right? part of ongoing contingency discussions. And obviously he gets briefed on this in his daily intelligence briefing. We know he had this briefing over the weekend at Camp David. Can you give us any more detail or sense of how often he's the president's being briefed on Ukraine, who's doing it? Uh, is he asking for updates every hour? You know, give us some sense of what's going on on this issue. Sure. Um, I can tell you um, from being in a lot of meetings with him that are unrelated to Ukraine as well, that he is often asking for updates um, and looking for updates from his national security team on where things stand, how conversations are going, uh, and that's something he regularly asks for. He's seeing his team or members of his team every day. Of course, there are central members that you're very familiar with who participate in the PDB, Jake Sullivan and others, and of course, he's regularly talking with uh, our Secretary of State, who has been uh, front and center in the diplomatic efforts. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, it's kind of like offhand. Yeah, we'll we'll get we'll get it to you after the briefing. Yes, important important visit. All right, that's that. You know, sorry for boring you guys with her and her lies. But anyways, have a great day, and uh, yeah, see you next time.